Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure all of us have came up with lies that sounded pretty good in our minds, but when we actually told them our parents did not believe us, they're complete BS. <coughs> Kurt Vaughan once said, people need good lies. There are too many bad ones. And I completely agree with this question, I mean with this quote, because, well, through two examples. One, through a friend that I had, and one, just through athletes faking injuries, saying that they did not happen the way they did. And the first example is Jabba Chamberlain. He used, he used to pitch for, at the time he used to pitch for the Yankees, and he broke his ankle, and he said that he hurt his ankle playing jumping on his trampoline with his, ch with his child, and he fell off and somehow broke his ankle. And the second, the second uh, example I have is many, many baseball players say they, they tore their oblique muscle or hurt their oblique muscle sneezing, which I'm not sure how that is possible, but I guess it is. And the second example is I had a friend <coughs> who she told her parents she was staying at her friend's house for a week, but she actually ended up going to Florida to meet her, I guess, online boyfriend or something. And she was shown pictures, I mean her parents were shown pictures of her taking of her and her boyfriend. Like, oh we're at Miami Beach, we're somewhere in Florida. So that when her parents found out she came back, she was grounded and not 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 able to go anywhere. And yeah, thank you. Alejandro, I like the opening. I thought that it was a pretty good attention device and the tie into the topic was good. I thought the setup of your purpose was pretty solid. It sounds like you've got a preview, uh, but you are rushing through it a little bit. And I think you want to be a little bit more patient because it's going to give you a chance to think some more about what you want to say about those particular points. Um, I, apparently, uh, the one guy that you talked about, uh, Chamberlain, uh, didn't hurt his leg play, playing on the trampoline? I don't know the story here. Uh, so I don't know why this is a lie and why it was a bad lie. And uh, the people who supposedly tore their oblique uh, sneezing, well, you know, who's used that as an excuse? Why would you even make up a story like that if it wasn't true? I, 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 there's a context here that's missing. Maybe there's a contract thing, for instance, if you injure yourself and you're doing something that's not, you know, that the contract specifically excludes you from doing that, that that would be a problem. So if he broke his ankle, for instance, skiing or uh, uh, bungee jumping or something like that, and it's, his contract says you can't do that and he's lying about it so he's not going to lose his uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, whatever he gets paid, then I could see why that matters. Otherwise, who cares? You know, why, you, do you do that because you look less like an idiot? I'm not exactly sure that breaking your leg on the trampoline makes you look less like an idiot than whatever it is he actually did. And the people who tore their obliques, you know, if they did it, uh, I don't know, playing, uh, you know, working out or something else, and then they said, well, it's because I was sneezing, does that really make them sound less like an idiot? That makes it, it, makes it sound like they're kind of, uh, you know, fragile. 
You know, I'm not exactly sure. I want the, somebody who's playing a game for me and I'm paying a lot of money to. But you're so fragile that you tear your muscles when you uh, sneeze. Holy criminy, I shouldn't be putting you on the field. You know, that would be a good reason to cut somebody. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what it is that those examples prove. And I think that that's part of the problem is that you have examples and you know these people have made up a story, but you haven't given us enough context or an explanation about why you're talking about them. Uh, the presentation, I think your voice projects well. Uh, you've got pretty good variety in your voice, a lot more than I think I've seen in some of your other presentations, so I thought you worked a little bit harder at that. Um, a little bit rushed, I think, toward the, uh, during the speech. Uh, you can pace yourself a little bit more. You're, there are basically no gestures. You hold your hands behind your back 90% of the time. There was one gesture that came out when you apparently let go of your fingers and they, they drifted out front. But most of the time, it just seems like you are, you know, you've got that kid's pose in front of the class reciting the poem in the third grade where you've got your hands held behind your back and you're just kind of you know, okay, you know, that sort of thing. And you, you, you need to be a little bit more sure of yourself. Um, your facial expressions, I thought you were more animated and your eye contact was better than it's been in the past. So I thought that was a pretty good improvement. Uh, you stand very confidently, except for maybe the arms being behind the back. I thought that your posture looked really solid and that you looked and stood there like you were confident in what you were saying. Um, you know, the short, the time is not long. You didn't spend as much time developing things as you could have. Uh, the conclusion felt a little bit abrupt. I think you're just missing some opportunities here, but I think there's improvement in what I've seen in your delivery. Thank you.